Here's an example with Cauchy sequences. Our goal is to review basic techniques for epsilon proofs. For here, we're going to need the triangle inequality and general manipulation with inequalities. Now, a problem. Suppose we have a sequence of real numbers, x sub n. The sequence satisfies for all n greater than or equal to 1. If we take the distance between any two consecutive x's, we'll bound that by 1 over 2 to the n. We want to prove that x sub n is a Cauchy sequence. So, first step is to pull out the definition of Cauchy sequence. x sub n is a Cauchy sequence if and only if, given any epsilon greater than 0, there's some natural number capital N, such that for all m and little n greater than or equal to capital N, we have that the distance between x sub n and x sub n is less than epsilon. So what this says, if we go far enough out in the sequence, if I take the distance between any two of those points, it's always going to be less than epsilon. So we're controlling how far these points can spread. Now, the advantage of using Cauchy sequences, if we're over the real numbers, every Cauchy sequence is going to converge to a real number L, the limit. We note in our definition of Cauchy sequence, we make no reference to the limit L. So Cauchy sequences give us a method for testing convergence when we have no idea what the limit would be. That's useful, for instance, in the problem we have at hand. So here, there's no mention made of a limit, but we can still prove that the sequence converges when we're just given a general property. Now, draw back to Cauchy sequences. If we try to generalize to spaces other than the reals, those spaces may have holes in them. So for instance, if we consider the rational numbers, okay, there's a hole at every irrational point, I can set up a sequence of rational numbers that converges in the real numbers to some number, but not to a rational number. So for instance, if we take square root of 2, I'm just going to keep adding on extra decimal places. That's going to give me a sequence of rational numbers that converges to the irrational number square root of 2. So this sequence doesn't converge in the rationals. It does converge in the real numbers, though. Now, you'll also note, this is also going to give us a case of the problem we have at hand. So this sequence that we're looking at here is going to be Cauchy, where we replace the 1 half with a 1 tenth. Now, for the proof, we start by doing our work off to the side. Once we figure out how to do our proof, we come back and we write it up nicely. Now, the goal is we take our assumptions, our definition, we're going to manipulate the inequalities until we figure out what we should let capital N be for a given epsilon. So our work starts with this term here, the absolute value of x sub m minus x sub n. Now, m and n are to be greater than or equal to some capital N to be determined later. I'm going to assume, since m and n are arbitrary, that n is greater than m. That's going to let me write x sub m minus x sub n as a telescoping sum. Now, in our assumption, we're only working with consecutive integers. So if I go to this telescoping sum, we're going to have exactly what we need. Note, if we take sums pairwise, on the inside, they're going to cancel, and we'll be left with our original term. Now, here, we can apply the triangle inequality. So we're going to have that this term is less than or equal to the sum of the absolute values of the terms in the parentheses. Then, these are going to be exactly what we need to let our assumption apply. So we can rewrite each of these as powers of 1 half and then take the sum. Next step, I'll factor out a 1 half to the m minus 1. So I'll give me a lead term of 1 half. Then what we have here is a partial sum for a geometric series. So if we were to take the sum for the series of all powers, that's going to sum up to 1. So this is always going to be less than or equal to 1. That says our term here, absolute value of the difference of x sub m and x sub n, is less than or equal to 1 over 2 to the m minus 1. 
Now, this is gonna let me figure out how to determine what capital N should be. So let's do a little bit of manipulation first. If I have capital N less than or equal to M, because two to the X is an increasing function, we have that two to the capital N is less than or equal to two to the M. If I divide both sides by two to the M times two to the capital N, we have one over two to the M is less than or equal to one over two to the capital N. So if I multiply through on both sides by a two, that's gonna give me one over two to the M minus one is less than or equal to one over two to the N minus one. And note, this is gonna be the term I wanna set less than epsilon. So that's gonna be the N we use over in the beginning. Now, one thing we have to worry about, if you give me any epsilon, can I find an N that gets this term below that epsilon? Well, one over two to the N minus one is gonna go down to zero as we let N go to infinity, so that's not gonna be a problem. So that's gonna give us our proof. 